I felt like there were a lot of memoirs out there by comedians and they're all wonderful and I listen to all of them but I come from a writer background and I'm always trying to think of a more original angle or something that's not been done so I thought no one's ever sort of done an ironic biography of someone who isn't famous so I thought that would be something I could do would be tell my dad's story the silverback tell his story from 1941 to 2003 that will be the period of the memoir or biography whatever you want to call it and accidentally tell my story at the same time when it occurs when after I'm born until 2003 there's no like I picked up the microphone and here's my first gig I'll never forget my first TV appearance nothing it's not in there there's no TV I don't go to university and meet anyone famous there's no miracle moment where I become a stand-up the book stops at my first gig it stops as I touch the microphone it starts as I touch the microphone it's almost got like a looped chronology I think there's a lot of people that will read my book that will identify with it it might not be your dad it might be an uncle it might be a brother it might be your son who's grown up into this sort of knuckle dragging alpha male testosterone it just, he was a weightlifting semi-professional bodybuilder rugby player sheet metal worker asbestos remover probably sucked it out with his mouth through a straw <sighs> a metal welding, a bouncer, everything manly you could do, he could do. He was about 16 stone, about 5% body fat at his peak. And he got me for a son, sort of, with a glittery question mark over my head. Hey dad, I might be into theater. And it was just a complete clash of culture. I just think my old man didn't know how to deal with boys, full stop. Uh, we were just little blokes to him. When I see pictures of him holding me as a baby, it sounds a bit deep, this. I, I struggle to imagine that that actually took place. Uh, my old man, once, soon as we were three or four, my mum said, that was it. They're like, they're little geezers. Why aren't they pulling their weight? And my dad had such, such a tough childhood with the paternal abandonment that it's not like he wanted it to be hard, but that's the only school he knew to get you from boy to man. So he just didn't, he just didn't know what to do with us. It's not until this new wave of feminism has come through, and it's, of course, there's only so much volume for gender discussion before we all go, shut up. And so the, the push against men in the new way that's happened is actually good, because this, this bubble's come up with this new stuff that was initially unhelpful, yeah, menemism and all that, which is obviously ridiculous to be laughed at. But it's provoked debates at the side about men not checking in, men not sharing male mental health. So I do wonder, rather than it, if it being a self-starter, it's some, it's a sort of beneficial byproduct of this new, slightly angrier feminism, which I love, obviously. When you sit down to read your to read an audio book, whether it's mine or anyone else, you should like, oh, I've just got to sit here and read for an hour. That's just, I'm sorry, that's quite boring, and it really. Just sitting out and reading for an hour, it just puts you back at school. You're like, ugh, I just couldn't be fucked. I'm, that's, I'm, that, that is the God's honest opinion. I sat down, I could not be asked to read out, eight, I don't actually know how long it is, eight or nine hours. I just, it's so daunting. I'm very active. This, I like to feel like a process could go anywhere, like it might change after an hour. That's why I love stand up. That's why I love interviews. I love most things, but sitting out reading, no thanks. But after about, 25, 30 minutes, because I'd forgotten some of it. I started to enjoy it a few what I was reading and then I started performing it and then I was looking forward to it. And then it was great. And then we, in fact, we went back and redid the beginning with that vibe.